what I'm doing now is setting up a little metal working shop in my garage and I've always wanted to have a little metal working shop I just didn't want to mix it in with the wood workshop that I had before something I've always wanted is a CNC machine and I've looked around at CNC machines whether I can afford one or not and yeah they're at the top end of my budget for like an entry level but what I was thinking was something a little bit easier maybe it doesn't sound easier to everyone it definitely doesn't feel easy but there's a thing called CNC plasma and what I'm going to do is produce one of them. The reason I'm going to start with that is there's no resistance on the movement etc so it's a relatively straightforward bare bones kind of build that means I can understand the movement, the controls and the setup and how a CNC machine works. The reason I'm going to make it myself is because what I don't want to do is be reliant on a company that made it to then help me if there's an issue. What I want to do is know the machine inside out so that's my main reason for creating one myself. The joy of it is, is that then I can move on from that and build my ideal machine, which would be a CNC wood router. So what I've done, I'm just gonna spin you around. I have designed the base here. So I'll show you in a video in a moment. I've, got, I've screen recorded the CAD, but this is basically the base for the CNC plasma. And today's video is gonna be about how that's made. So what I've done is I have bought this second hand Sealy metal cutting bandsaw. It's a really nice little machine. Well, it looks nice on the outset. 240 volts, it just plugs into the mains there. And it also flips up to become like a conventional bandsaw. And this piece sits on here to create a nice little cutting station for normal stuff. Anyway, over to the cut. It's cut really well and it's cutting perfectly square, which is nice. So I've checked it with this combi square. I'm gonna just do a time lapse of cutting these bits and then move on to um, some prep work for getting these welded together with the Mighty MIG. to do is put these small chamfers or bevels on the ends where we're due to do welding and what this does is allows a deeper penetration of the weld which creates a stronger joint. If I lay two bits together we obviously have the radius on the edges of this 50 by 50 but with a little bit of chamfer, we create a V between the two pieces that we can then fill with weld. pieces now so four legs the shelf stretchers that are going to go underneath if I can get it to focus um, the supports for the water table that's going to go on top um, and yeah that's it so the only thing I need to do to complete this frame is add some leveling feet so I've got these off eBay they are M12 leveling foot uh, I don't know what they're rated to, you know, stress-wise or load-wise, but I did have a look at some similar ones and they were rated to about 750 kilos. So, although I can't quite see it in these, I don't think we're gonna even be reaching near that. So, this is what I've gone for. Um, in relation to costings, I'll show you that. So apart from the man saw that I got and all the other bits already had, we're gonna ignore machinery. The 50 by 50 steel box, aim to 250 feet they came to 14.95 and I have actually budgeted or what I'm guessing is going to be about 3.3k overall hoping that that's going to be right
see subscriptions go up. One of those things you don't really know whether it's going to be uh, interesting to anyone. And I'm not that interesting unless I'm having a laugh with my mates. So I'm hoping this is interesting for everyone. So there it is, see you in part two.